All right. So what we're going to talk about today is doing glass in Unity because it's actually a little different than you might think. So really quickly, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a like a water glass. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to add a, um, a cylinder, and I'm I'm actually doing this um, in real time for you instead of just having the object already built. Uh, quite on purpose, actually, so that you can kind of see how this might work for you. So I'm going to scale it up a little bit, uh, move it up here so that we have uh, it sitting on the grid. I'm finding that that really helps a lot, by the way, bringing things into Unity when it's sitting, on the, it's sitting down on the floor of the grid that helps. So I'm going to go into edit mode here. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this top face. So I'm just going to delete only that face. And I've got a face at the bottom, but one of the other things that I'm finding that's real difficult when you are texturing objects is when Blender does these faces where there's no connection between the points. Okay, so there's no connection from that point to that point, you know, that vertice to that vertice, whatever. So whenever I see a face like that, I always delete it. And now I've got an open uh, bottom. I'll Alt right click on in between vertices. I get the entire bottom. I extrude, left click immediately, and scale. S key to scale, extrude, left click, S key to scale, and then Alt M, and merge them at the center. So now I've got basically a good floor where all the vertices are connected somehow. That's actually really important. It helps a lot when you're doing uh, UV unwrapping, stuff like that. Um, you can put your seams wherever you want. So now I need to make this glass actually have substance because right now it's paper thin and if you remember with blender we can't have paper thin objects because what will happen is if I put any texture on this we'll see the texture on the outside of the normals but on the inside of the object this will be transparent no matter what I do so first I'm gonna alt right click on the top rim here bring it up a little bit make this a little taller and then I'm going to do almost the exact same thing I'm gonna hit extrude left click, scale, but then I'm only going to scale it a little bit. And now I'm going to hit the three key on the numpad so that I'm kind of sideways. And then I'll go to wireframe mode, which is the Z key or this menu over here. Okay, so Z. Now I'm going to hit the E key again for extrude, left click again, and now I'm going to bring down the inside of the glass because glass has substance. And if I go back to my mode here you can see now I've got you know some thickness to the glass this is actually really important to do so that you can see on the inside as well as the outside so <clears throat> now I'm gonna hit the 7 key on the numpad so that I'm looking straight up on top and I'm going to hit extrude again E extrude left click and then I'm gonna scale it in roughly to about the same place that that cross section is on the bottom and then extrude left click scale it in, Alt M at center. And now you can see how I've got a nice, just a simple, like a water glass or something like this. Now here comes the difficult part, is actually doing the transparency. It's actually not so difficult, believe it or not. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to file Save As, and I'm going to go put this in my game folder here. So I'm going to go to, let's see, I have it on the C drive, um, uh, game design. Here's my game design project. Um, oh, wait, no, I had it on in here. That's right. I put it on the server. So uh, do, 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 where is it? Um, Did I put it in demo files? Game design. Yes, there it is. 1617 assets, my assets. Now I'm going to make a new folder and I'll call this glass. Okay. Open it up and I'll just call this glass. Okay. So now I've got the Blender file inside my game and I can go into Unity here <clears throat> and it should import it and we'll see, um, we'll see it come in here. So there's glass, and there, here's my object. So I just drag it in here, hit the F key, zooms it in real nicely, and we can see it's got no shader, it's got nothing. In Blender, what would work 
to make this have a shader is put a material on it, put a texture on it, go back to your material, and down here is transparency. And you can check that on, and then you can kind of play with the alpha, and let's just set to render mode here, and you can see how it's got transparency. Okay, nice and simple. Um, and we've got some other problems. It looks like my normals are flipped. Oh, they're fine here. Um, but you can play with the transparency and the reflectivity and all that other stuff in here. The problem is this does not translate to Unity. So if I save that and I go back here, nothing happens. If you want to do, oh, it did actually. How about that? But it doesn't always do it right. So you can play with that. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. How about that? But what I found gives you a little bit more control over that than that. Just turn that off. And you can go back here. Whoops, I need to resave it. <clears throat> go back into Unity. This will go solid again. And you can actually go to the material here. Come on. Eh, I suppose it's possible I didn't quite hit the save button, so save. There we go. Just thinking about it. Nope, still likes it. This is part of the problem that I was having earlier. So anyway, just delete this real quickly. <clears throat> so what you can do, to show you, is you can open up the Blender object and you can click on your uh, cylinder. You can go here where the, uh, where the material is, find the material. If you have multiple objects and each one has a different material on it, then you might have to click on the individual material uh, object, the mesh object that's inside the Blender object. I love that Unity allows you to do this. You can open up an object and click on individual mesh objects. Because this one's simple, it's right here. So I can scroll down. Here's my shader, which you can do in Unity to do a transparency shade. Oh, that's why. It got set to transparent. Ah, oh, that's why. So when it read my Blender shader being transparent, it actually changed the rendering mode to transparent. Usually it's set to opaque, like this, um, when it sees a material coming in from Blender. So that, ex that explains that. So that's something I just learned, is that when you bring in a Blender object the first time with a transparent shader on it, it ch changes the rendering mode from opaque to transparent. But if you're having problems with that, you can do that here in Unity. You click on the object, you find the shader, you change it to transparent, okay? And then now you can go over here to where it says albedo. You click here, this pops up, and you'll notice that you can set a color, and then you can set the transparency with the alpha slider here. So I can make it a little bit more or less transparent depending upon what I want to do. And you can see now I've got a red glass. Um, <clears throat> And uh, you can go in here and play with that. You know, you can make it bluish, OK? And because I've dragged the object directly into Unity, it's changing it immediately as opposed to using a prefab. Um, but I can start to play with how transparent it is. And you'll notice like it throws less of a shadow if it's more transparent or whatever. Um, so this kind of helps. You can also ch talk about the metallic properties and the smoothness of the object to change the reflections on it. So lower smoothness actually has a little bit more reflection. A higher smoothness seems to be a little bit more transparent, less reflection on it. Uh, that sort of a thing. And you can kind of see everything looks uh, actually pretty good. OK? It doesn't, I don't have a subsurf modifier on there or whatever. So <clears throat> to, to recap, and then we'll go into something else. When you have a shader on here, if you set it in Blender, the first time you bring it in and you click Transparency on, when you open Unity the first time, it will read that and set the shader to Transparent Rendering Mode. However, what's been confusing me as I've been helping people do this with Glass for the health packs, is that if you have it on Solid, and then you bring it into Unity, and then you go back and change it to Transparent, there have been issues where it hasn't change the rendering mode to transparent. And that's where you take this and you can set it yourself to transparent. And then you can play with the colors in here anyway. So there's a lot of neat things that you can do. 
Um, it's not directly reading the material from Blender anymore, as you noticed. So I go back. It's still set to opaque here. Transparency is turned off. It doesn't matter. This is now set to transparent for this object. However, what if I wanted liquid in this glass? Let's say this is like a health potion. I'm supposed to, my character's supposed to drink it. Some people have asked, you know, how would I do that easily? Well, there's actually a really easy way to do that, and that is through the use of Booleans. Um, a Boolean is an adding or a subtracting process. So one of the things that's really hard to do with, uh, with, this, with glass is to add an object that would be exactly the same size as the interior of your glass. So what I might do is Shift A, I'm going to add a cube. And I'm just going to scale it up, and that's going to be my liquid. So now I'm going to take this um, cube, and I'm going to actually go to my modifier, and I'm going to add a Boolean modifier to it. And that Boolean modifier is going to be the difference of the cube and my cylinder. <clears throat> now what you don't see, let's turn the cylinder off here for a second, is now it's cut a hole right down through the center of my cube that is exactly the same size as my cylinder. Oh. So now I can hit the Apply button, go into Edit Mode, and now you'll see I have basically a whole object here that I can now edit. So I'm going to go uh, Z, and you can see the inside. So I'm going to select uh, all of this, and I'm just going to grab these four corners that's on the outside, and I'm going to delete everything that's on the outside of my object here. So there we go. And I'm only going to leave the inside object. Now I just grabbed the vertice that was on the inside of that. But I'm just going to delete everything that's on the outside of the object. I'll probably have to flip my normals on this too. So let's get rid of that. And I just double check. That all looks good. So X, delete my vertices. Boom. So now I have this object here. Well, that's interesting. So let's see, three. Circle select, whoop, Z, circle select. I can trash that. X, delete my vertices. So now, look, I've got a great object. Let's give it a different color. <clears throat> so now I'm going to hit new, and I'm going to uh, try just a red color. Let's say the liquid's going to be red. Do a texture. Um, I could put an image on here and do a UV map, but why bother? Um, if I turn my cylinder back on, you'll see what I've got. Look, they're exactly the same size. Let's see what happens. This is going to be a little bit of an experiment. Let's see what happens when I bring this into, or allow it to update back into Unity. Give it a second here. OK. <clears throat> it's interesting that it decided to fall over on its side. But now you'll notice what's really cool is the um, The transparent object stayed transparent, and the glass object, or the, the glass stayed transparent, and the liquid inside stayed solid red. And if I go and I click open here, you'll notice now if I click on here, the material is gone off of the inspector. Now I have to click on the individual mesh objects because Unity recognizes that they have separate rendering or uh, separate materials. And I can click on here, and now I could, if I wanted to, Take this one, and I could make it into a transparent red. Click here and make it like almost fully uh, opaque to make it you know, a little bit see-through, but make it look a little bit like a liquid as well. So that's basically how you can do transparent items. Now, what I'm not going to get into today, which will be a different demo, is let's say I had an object like this one here, let me just close this blender, where the object is all one thing. So if I go to, um, if I go to my uh, do users, oh, I was really basically there. If I go into this game design project, I have a syringe um, that I was building. Uh, life pack. Uh, nope, this isn't it. Health box, here it is. I have a syringe here, okay, where I might want certain pieces to be clear. Uh, let's go to default. Okay, and I, and I have 
it's all one object. And let's say I wanted this part to be glass, but I wanted this part to be metal, so I'm doing a UV texture. That is a completely different demo because now, instead of having two different objects with two different materials, I only have one object and I can only put one material on it. So now I've got to be really careful with what I do. And there's actually two ways around that, and I would do a future demo on how you would set up certain areas of an object to be transparent if that object had areas that were transparent and other areas that are opaque. Okay, That's a completely different situation, and you might find yourself in a, in a position where that's going to be difficult, but it actually does work out pretty well. Any questions? Okay.